Okay, I am back after uh, about a six year hiatus since the last motovlog video that I made. And I, uh, I thought it would be interesting to take another ride around Cape May in a post-COVID-19 environment just to uh, sort of document how things have changed down here in, uh, in Cape May in Lower Township as a result of the coronavirus. I'm sure like every community, uh, Cape May, North Cape May, Lower Township have not been immune to the um, health and economic consequences of COVID-19. And I don't know how long these uh, effects will continue, so I thought it would be interesting to record another uh, motovlog video just to sort of document this, if for no other reason than my own uh, posterity and looking back on this in the future, uh, someday when COVID is a distant bad memory. So I'm on the uh, Ninja, and as I said, it's been about six years or so since I last made a motovlog. I've used the channel, my channel, uh, in the past several years solely to record my granddaughter's uh, gymnastics routines, which is helpful because I get a company to evaluate, review and evaluate her routines and uh, send me reports on all of the uh, things that she would get deductions for in her competitive meets. So that's really been the sole use of this channel for the past six years or so. Um, it's August 2nd today and and I just uh, was looking at my channel and saw that I haven't really used it for motovlogging and six years or so, so I thought it would be, you know, wor a worthwhile effort. I'm riding on Bayshore Road at this point, and I guess at this point, you know, you can't really see any noticeable difference uh, from six years ago to today, but I think when you get over to Cape May, you'll see some of the impacts, most notably the impact on um, restaurants and the social distancing requirements uh, have devastated the restaurant industry pr pretty much everywhere, including Cape May. I would say uh, at least half of the restaurants have outdoor seating that uh, they can accommodate uh, guests for with appropriate social distancing. None of the restaurants in the state of New Jersey are allowed to have indoor dining as of this point in time, which again is August 2nd, 2020. And as I said, the ones that can uh, accommodate outdoor seating are doing so. Many of the small little bistro type of restaurants simply don't have that capability. So they are limited to carry out and curbside pickup. Um, and some of my favorite restaurants are just those types of small bistros uh, where they just don't have the um, ability to set up tables outside. Um, so it, it's really been, uh, it, it meaning COVID has been devastating to the industry, uh, the restaurant industry down here. And you'll see some of that. You'll see how some of the restaurants have have dealt with it. Uh, and also the um, requirements for social distancing affect everything in Cape May. It, it affects the miniature golf courses. It affects, uh, it affects the convention center. It affects, um, 
you know, uh, the, the beaches require social distancing. And they also um, have a mask requirement in New Jersey when you cannot social distance. Any, any business to enter requires a mask. The uh, mask requirements for outdoors is when you cannot consistently socially distance. So I think if you went on to the beach, you would probably be able to socially distance acceptably without wearing a mask. But when you see the uh, when you see the Washington Street Mall, I want to say that it probably 50% of the people will be wearing a mask. 50% will not. So I'm crossing the um, crossing the canal now, heading into West Cape May. It's a beautiful day. The uh, hurricane, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, it's, uh, I, I call it Isaac, but it's really not Isaac. It, I forget how you pronounce the name of the storm. But that is coming up the coast, and it's expected to hit here on Tuesday. I don't know that it's still going to be hurricane force winds when it gets here, but uh, they're expecting very bad weather here on Tuesday. Uh, Monday, I guess starting late Monday and throughout the day Tuesday. But today it's a beautiful day. Uh, it's probably in the low 80s, a little bit overcast, as you can see on the video, hopefully. Um, and over the past uh, six years since I made a moto vlog, a few things have changed for me personally. Uh, the most notable one is I now have three grandchildren instead of one. Uh, and my grandkids are the light of my life with uh, my wife and I. We, we adore them and that's been by far the most difficult part of this whole COVID thing is separating from our grandkids. Up until February of this year, my wife and I were not remote grandparents. I mean, we were intimately involved in our grandkids' lives. I used to um, take my granddaughter Madison to gymnastics every, every at least once a week and uh, really became her sort of unofficial gymnastics coach and my wife would babysit our, our youngest which is uh, coming up on her second birthday so she's almost two years old and she used to do that at least once a week and we can't do that anymore and my grandson which or who turns six next month uh, we used to pull him out of his daycare and surprise him and take him to movies and uh, take him to the bowling alley and things like that uh, just to break up his week and with the onset of COVID we've not been able to do any of those things and that has by far been the most negative aspect of coronavirus for my wife and I. To illustrate uh, or to give an example of this, my granddaughter a week ago made her first Holy Communion and it really pained my wife and I that we were not able to uh, attend her uh, First Holy Communion Mass. And, uh, you know, that's a pretty noteworthy event for uh, Catholics. And we were very 
disappointed and saddened that we could not attend her mass and, and be able to celebrate that with her and we couldn't go out with their family afterwards so it's been a uh, a rough six months from our standpoint on you know on that other impacts i guess is um i other noteworthy changes is that i retired uh last october and that was not a voluntary retirement per se my employer was relocating uh, out of Pennsylvania to northern New Jersey and I was offered the opportunity to transfer with them and work out of northern New Jersey but it was not commutable from where I live outside of Philadelphia so we would have had to relocate and for those employees that declined to relocate they offered an enhanced severance package of one year salary so I took the um, enhanced severance package given my age uh, and that began last October so I'm sort of winding down that one year of severance and I'm still a good two years away from Social Security uh, Social Security at the normal retirement age uh, I, I guess I I could elect to start collecting Social Security sooner if I if I wanted to or if I needed to, but I don't think we need to. I think we should be okay. So that's you know the, the retirement is the other um, big change since I last made a video. To anybody that followed my videos before, you can see that we're coming across Sunset and West Perry, and now entering over into Cape May. And here you can see one restaurant. You can see the outdoor dining Sapori's uh, has set up. Coming up on Beach Drive here in Cape May and I will take a quick run down Beach Drive and then uh, you'll see one of the streets in the heart of the city, I think it's Decatur, the city has actually closed off to traffic uh, and allowed some of the local restaurants to set up tents and tables to be able to accommodate guests. I think, you know, as I said, I think uh, it, it goes without saying that COVID has had a devastating effect on businesses everywhere, but this community, uh, Cape May, I think, has been particularly hard hit because it's, it's a seasonal entertainment uh, resort economy. And for the better part of the last better part of the last six months hotels were not even permitted to take any guests so many of the hotels were were literally shut down some of the other uh, consequences of the coronavirus pandemic had other cascading effects on the economy here as one example many of these restaurants and businesses down here employ foreign exchange students for the season and they come here largely from Europe on J-1 visas and as part of the effort to um, control further spread of coronavirus the uh, The J-1 visa program was, was shut down. And here I am at the, uh, at the Cove, and you can see the number of people here. It's, it looks like a pretty decent crowd. 
it's still early in the morning it's probably not even 11 o'clock yet so a pretty decent crowd this is the pavilion and I'm at the end of the promenade and as you can see the promenade if you can see that sign it's one and a half 1.4 miles from end to end So anyway, uh, the suspension of J-1 visas has basically uh, cut off the labor supply uh, to many of the local uh, restaurants and hotels of all of their uh, foreign exchange students that would come here uh, and work in the, uh, in the season. That's, that's one additional impact. I don't know if you can tell this on the video or not. I'll know when I get back and, and upload it. Uh, my son-in-law put on uh, new exhaust on this bike since I last recorded a moto vlog. So I don't know how the sound and the uh, audio of this will turn out being recorded with this new, uh, new exhaust versus the you know, the factory standard exhaust that was on it six years ago when I recorded videos. I still have the, uh, the Harley, uh, which I usually ride. I'm not sure why I started recording moto vlogs on the Ninja as opposed to on the Harley, but in any event, I'm coming along here, uh, Beach Drive, and I guess at this point, not much looks really different than the pre-COVID days. You can see it's still, there's now a pretty decent crowd, but you can see some of the people wearing masks. But as you can also see, not everybody's wearing masks. And as, it, as I said before, that's okay. I think the rule is that you only are required to wear masks outside if you are not going to be able to consistently socially distance. But coming up here, you can see on the left, they basically closed down the uh, parking lane and they set up tables for some of the restaurants here uh, on the sidewalk and the pedestrians now walk down what used to be the parking lane. You can see some of those tables so that some of these small restaurants can uh, serve customers on the sidewalk outside their restaurant. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but it's one of the ways that the um, restaurants are trying to navigate through these very challenging times. So it looks like when you come down here, it looks like it's construction, but it's really not construction. It's just, I guess for lack of a better term, it's the new normal for the time being down here. Since retiring, uh, I, I think in my very first moto vlog that I recorded, I indicated that uh, I was contemplating moving down here in retirement. And when I retired, we were spending considerably more time here um, than we than we used to, but we did not move here and during the uh, the height of the uh, pandemic we were not even coming down here for well over three months because as a reasonably small community it was there was a, a lot of concern rightfully so I guess on the part of many of the local residents that as as the economy shut down in many places a lot of people that owned second homes would flock down here and decide to sort of quarantine down quarantine down here and in the off season which is when all this was happening say in in March and April uh, the healthcare system down here and the other commercial establishments like the um, grocery stores 
could not accommodate the large influx of people that typically they can accommodate during the season. So there was a lot of strong encouragement uh, from all of the local government officials to second homeowners to not come down here uh, during the quarantine. So my wife and I, out of respect for the, uh, out of respect for the uh, people that were full-time residents, we decided to remain up in Pennsylvania for three months or so and did not come down at all. But since, uh, since Pennsylvania and New Jersey moved into the green phase, they allowed uh, the government officials here, I don't want to say they allowed because you were legally, if you own a home here, you were always allowed to come. But once they moved into a green phase, they sort of welcomed second homeowners to come back and my wife and I did did just that this is the Washington Street Mall coming up here uh, you can see the Our Lady Star of the Sea Catholic Church On the right hand side is the back end of the Washington Street Mall, which I, I'm sure everybody, the handful of people that will look at this video know that already. This restaurant is new, this Willow and Stone. Uh, it's owned by Peter Shields Inn, but this is, this is what I was mentioning. This is Decatur Street, and you can see that they closed it off to traffic, and uh, the Ugly Mug restaurant, as well as Finn's, have set up tables and tents and they um, accommodate patrons out here in, in a socially distant manner because you cannot dine indoors. You can see some tables here. This is Delaney's Irish Pub, and you know, this is the back of it, but they also have set up some tables. This restaurant here on the right is Tish's restaurant, and they always had, in addition to indoor dining, some outdoor dining options. So that's not anything really new as a result of coronavirus. Congress Hall, which is right in front of me, the, the yellow building, uh, for a long period of time uh, was not able to take any guests. And even now, in the wake of um, coronavirus, they have restricted uh, admission to some of the the bars and lounges inside to guests of the hotel which is unfortunate because one of the things that my wife and I used to like to do was go over there and spend an afternoon sitting in there having a glass of wine or get some hors d'oeuvres and snacks uh, and it was a nice way they would always have someone playing the piano in there and it was a nice way to spend an afternoon especially if the weather was not nice but that's not an option to us anymore because they wanted to create as safe an environment for the guests of the hotel as they could so they have restricted admission to all of those places to people that are actually staying at the hotel which while it's disappointing for for us it's understandable. And this is the other end of Decatur. 
as you can see, it's blocked off the traffic. Over here to my left is a restaurant, 410 Bank Street, uh, which is a, one of the fine dining restaurant establishments in Cape May. And as you can see, next to the Cape May stage, there's a little parking lot, and they've converted that into some outdoor um, seating to try to accommodate guests. And that's 410 Bank right there. This restaurant, the Yellow Building, uh, basically did not open this season because of the coronavirus. So anyway, that's a little quick tour through uh, the heart of Cape May. So you can see some of the very obvious consequences of, uh, of COVID. Another one that I can mention is here on my right is uh, the Cape May, one of the main miniature golf courses in Cape May right here and they never open this summer. I'm coming up on West Perry. On the left is Cape May and on the right is, uh, I guess, West Cape May. This is Gecko's and Key West Taco, and they have a little outdoor dining area. Another little restaurant that my wife and I uh, would frequent is coming up here on the right. It was called uh, Backstreet Simply Delicious. It's up here on the right where you, I don't know if you can see it from here, the uh, sort of the yellow brown awning. And they only do curbside uh, pickup and takeout. They have not opened up. You can, I don't know if you just noticed the sign I just passed where it said curbside pickup only. So I think what I'll do is uh, I'm going to stop this video, uh, see how this turns out, maybe post it, and I will make a couple of other videos riding around North Cape May, show some of the changes that have occurred in North Cape May in the last several years, and maybe up through the villas, and maybe separately down over into Cape May Point. So anyway, I hope this turns out and, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's it.